So we've been looking at difference and we've been, we sort of set the stage and understanding the challenges you guys had as a couple in terms of coming together, but you did come together. We did. So tell us about how love prevailed. How did you guys find your, how did you guys come together? Can I take this one? Yes, for sure. Love Evolution presents Mix It Up, a show where we look at love, life, and race in the six. On our first episode, we meet Marie and Dan, a couple running a catering business in the city. As soon as we met each other, it was honestly like, it was pretty effortless. And I've never met anyone quite like Marie before. And we kind of just hit it off. Uh, we did talk in the first day of meeting, we did Ooh. talk about controversial topics. We didn't All the shy away. Not, not to talk what about? we talked about. Like, that's it. What are, Religion, the, politics, philosophy, um, all of it, everything. Divorce. We, just, we got it all. Why we were divorced. So you like, put your cards on the table. We put it all on the table. We were 27 at the time. It was yeah. like, yeah. And so, um, you know, music, a lot of things. And uh, I th we both kind of identified that there was something special there. Yeah. And we um, were both yearning for connection. We connected on music like that. A lot of 90s stuff. Yeah. Um, you know. We're and, both fairly uh, fluid when it comes to music. Like, we're really interested in different types of genres. And neither of us are particularly big fans of pop music. So that's good. Yeah. <laughs> we, don't, we don't really like pop music. As a psychotherapist, I look at, especially as a Gestalt therapist, I look at similarity and difference in helping my clients. And I just love how that's coming out here, right? We talked about difference that emerged culturally, some of it taking on extreme right. tones. Um, and then you guys also were talking about similarity, the places you meet, right? Both love art, both love food. Food was a huge part of it, too. Both workaholics. <laughs> yeah, we both like workaholics. Well, you'd have to be to start a business together. It's true, right? it's true. We did our first joint dinner party, which was actually a, a Haitian and Scottish um, menu called Voodoo Haggis, which is also the handle. What a name. Yeah, <laughs> it's my handle, or was the handle that I used on Plenty of Fish. So when Daniel found Cute. me, he was like, have you ever tried haggis? And I had never tried haggis, so. That was kind of like his in. So you had an opening line. Yeah, I did. Actually, did <laughs> it, not reach it worked. Out. Like, did not reach out to you, but like, yeah, that was your your follow up, which is nice. So so far, we've been talking about your story here, right? Mm. How you guys have come as a couple. Yes. So, and we've been talking about 2020. We understand the just the quality of this year, right? But coming specifically to you, folks, mm. what would be the headline of you as a couple in terms of what you were dealing with? The conversation when you finally address the elephant explicitly. Our our answers are probably going to be different. Yeah. Um, or did you even want to set it up in terms of just describe like what it? Uh, actually, we'll go with the headline. What would be the headline? Uh, uh, reflection. Mm. Um, unearthing. Mm. I feel that. Mm. Yeah. Um, and for you, we're actually to have a therapist moment. <laughs> <laughs> What's it like to hear that from him as he says that? I felt that was impactful for me, so I'm just wondering as his partner, what was it like? Yeah, no, this, uh, three months ago, uh, I feel like Daniel and I really, I feel like he saw me for the first time. Mm. And I feel like he, he empathized and was able to feel what I felt for the first time. And it was, it was amazing. And so when he says unearthing. It feels like that. Yeah. Yeah. I feel so tender myself as a, as a third party, like witnessing this, right? There's a sense of tenderness as you share unearthing and you say, I feel seen. Yeah, Beautiful. I felt safe for the first time, really. It was. Wow. Because I, I probably wouldn't even do something like this. In a 10-year journey to get there, yeah. right? Yeah. Yeah, it was... It took, and the, the thing is, is like, it, it took a long time, but I mean, it, everyone's journey is different, right? And I think, and the thing is, is that our past relationships kind of influenced uh, the building blocks of our, our relationship because we're both divorced. Mm -hmm. And so it built this kind of like weird foundation for each other. Yeah. And for me, uh, in my experience, I, I think I spent a lot of this relationship being, lack of a better term, kind of selfish in a sense. Uh, it, a lot because the business was revolving around me. I was the type of person. I'm still the kind of the type of person that's kind of like on all cylinders. Let's do this. Let's do this. Let's do this. And what that did was that it didn't really leave a lot of space for Marie to mm. kind of build her own. Mm -hmm. And so I think in terms of, of race relations, if you want to blow that up a little bit, I think you can take that and maybe apply it on a broader scope. And how um, I think inter. Relational couples might be 
interacting with each other. The and dynamic. Yeah, the dynamic. My head's yeah. going, you know, people throw around the term intersectionality, yeah. but it's actually live happening here, right? Because we're not just talking about race, black, white, but you're actually invoking a critique of the patriarchy as a man, because that's the implicit thing yeah. here too, right? So um, I love it that these two things, being white and a man, um, can intersect. They do. They do. Um, and sure. we're talking about becoming aware, right? So yes. love this. And even the the idea of having been in relationships previously, um, like this this is called love evolution. This is what we're doing. Right. And so the whole idea of love evolution is that love is not stagnant. It is something in process. Yes. And I must um, be present um, and pay attention and take the cumulative understandings that I have, right? And this looks like live example of it. Well, yeah. I think when we started dating, I think Dana and we both agree, we knew that we were right for each other, just not right then. Mm. Like, we knew that we were the right people, just not at the right time. And I think that we both um, maybe didn't realize how much time it would take for us to become the right people for each other. And yeah. I think that, you know, more to Daniel's point, like, we both had stuff to unpack from previous relationships. My stuff, I feel, was a little easier to deal with. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, Daniel has a child, so there's there's more layers, and I knew that going into it, but it, it does make things a bit more challenging in terms of how much time and effort you take unpacking, you know, one person as opposed to building a relationship where we're equals. Well, and then we're talking about the family aspect of having children, which I'm going to get to in a second. Yeah. We have the hanging question for you about your headline. So his was unearthing. What's yours? I think my headline for this year would be empathy. Um, having empathy for the situation uh, that Daniel's in, having that extra layer of realizing like, oh, wow, this is how I've been for 10 years. Having empathy for myself, for what I've been through, and then having empathy for just each other. So I really feel the tenderness, the challenge even, about how challenging three months ago must have been for you. And share with me how you found, your, found yourself here, because obviously you managed, right? Um, so share with me um, your way forward. How did you manage as a couple? I think it's about um, prioritizing. We did a little bit of work last year, and we realized that because we had our children in such quick succession and our we literally got married and had two kids within a two and a half year span. That's so, a lot. Yeah, it's a lot. And I think we took the time last year to kind of reconcile and figure out like, what are our family values? What are the things that matter to us? How do we want to raise our kids? Like all, all the big tough questions. Um, we started doing that last year. And I feel like this year we put all that stuff into practice. So just looking at you two, I wouldn't be able to tell that you had uh, this tumultuous summer, right? <laughs> What's it like now? So you've gone through, so you had this transition, you're able to explore new roles that allowed you, um, sounds like you became more vulnerable. So tell me about now, um, where you've landed. I think it, it helped uh, to focus kind of inward and helped us to think about like, you know, what do we need yeah. as a family, as a couple? And what is it? What, what did you need? What do you need? <laughs> I think we needed some time. I knew for me, like I needed time for me. And we had literally gotten married and had two kids within two and a half years. And I just felt like there was this crazy quick succession conveyor belt where we just didn't really have a chance to sit down, pause and say, okay, this is our life now. Let's figure out how to make it more sustainable. We were still working off of you know, work practices and rules and things like that that worked when we were single with, with, uh, with no kids full time. So. I think a lot of our relationship revolved to what I was doing. So I took, I was taking up a lot of that space, and I didn't even know it because, it, like, a lot of that burden of like the my big life was kind of on my shoulders. So now, what's happening is that maybe we're becoming a little bit more balanced. Mm. So I don't want to speak for you, but you seem to be uh, yeah. flourishing. And then for me, I think it's a little bit more like a breath of fresh air for me too.
So this is the final product. I mean, typically there's different varieties of squash mm -hmm. in uh, this soup. I stuck to two different types of varieties just for simplicity. So the traditional color may not look like this. No, it's a little bit more, how would you like describe it? Like color. a golden color. Okay. It's because the Hubbard squash is so bright, mm -hmm. uh, but it's had such a nice smooth texture. My mouth is watering, by the way. <laughs> we haven't really gotten into like, oh. That was live. <laughs> <laughs> so that was, that's what fermentation looks like. <laughs> <laughs> That is very strong smelling. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> no, I, that was not a that was not a negative. So this looks delicious, and I can't wait to dig in. I wanted to just say a few last words about compassion. Um, in talking to you and hearing your story, um, I can really see how compassion, empathy, was a way forward for you in terms of navigating through the spring, uh, what came up, and being able to even invite me in and have a conversation, right? You've been talking about um, how you weren't ready for this before, and here we are, right? Yeah, yeah, for sure. This, this came at the right time for us. Definitely, yeah. On that note, shall we dig in? Let's go Absolutely. for it. Really taste that smoked bean. Yeah. Nice and tangy too. Delicious. Don't forget the ban um, banana pizza. Yummy. Mm -hmm. Thanks for uh, inviting me into your kitchen and sharing your stories and sharing your recipe. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. Can I, can I name you and you name me? Oh, I like that. Go for it. Uh, you would be either a squirrel or a chipmunk. And he'd be? He'd be a fox. So, can I get, can you make squirrel face and fox face? Squirrel face? <laughs> fox face? Is that possible? I feel like squirrels are so like mechanical and like, like fidgety, like, right? This is like a fox face? <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with us? <laughs> this is like... Like we're... <laughs>